really sure you could consider this to be spooky or horror in any way, but it definitely isn't not spooky or horror, you get me? Besides, I've wanted an excuse to try out Killer7 for a while now. <laughs> Killer7 is the game No More Heroes director Goichi Suda directed before that game's release, and I can see why he was trusted to create another experience after Killer7. This game is strange, wacky, creepy, and all in all, a way more unique experience than anything else you'd find from 2005. In Killer7, you are Garcian Smith, who appears to be a hitman of some kind. After receiving a phone call discussing the amount of enemies he needs to take out, in addition to the main target of the mission, Garcian seems to completely switch to a whole new person. We are now Dan Smith. And as it turns out, in addition to Garcian and Dan, there are five more personalities we can swap between during gameplay. K-Day, Kevin, Coyote, Khan, and Mask to Smith, all having their own abilities and gameplay style. And what follows is a strange mind screw of a game involving us taking out these weird ghost monsters called Heaven's Smile who laugh a lot and explode when they get too close. <laughs> And of course, taking out the main target of the mission, which is the main goal. I only played the first mission, and honestly, I still can't really tell you guys where I think the plot is going. You get some dialogue talking about the Smith Syndicate, or a little insight into some of the personalities, but not as much as to who we work for, or why we need to take out our target. But I'm sure that comes later in the game. Unless it's like Killer is dead, and it doesn't, in which that would suck, but innocent until proven guilty. Look at how cool this game looks, though. The heavy shadow contrast with its not really anime, but kinda anime style stands out so much, especially for the era. I can't say any other other game on the PS2 looks like Killer7, and I'm glad the style continued throughout some of Suda51's other works. The gameplay is definitely weird as well. You move on rails until you come to a fork in the road in which you choose which direction to go. There's a lot of survival horror-esque puzzles to solve as well as plenty of enemies to kill. When a heaven smile is near you, you'll hear it. So when you switch to first person view and scan the area, you can see them and take them out. <laughs> Each personality has something that makes them unique. Dan Smith is primarily combat oriented and is the best for taking out Heaven's Smile with his cool ass revolver. Kaide Smith can see secrets in the world and has a cool pistol that's slow to reload but has a lot of shots. Kevin Smith throws knives when he's not busy directing clerks and crying at Marvel movies. Coyote Smith can open up locks and has this voice line that I like. <laughs> Con Smith is fast as fuck, boy, and can take out fast enemies. And Master Smith has two grenade launchers, which makes any enemy a non issue, but you can't collect blood to level up in that case. Oh, and of course, we have Garcian Smith. He doesn't get much in terms of unique abilities with a silenced pistol, but if a different personality dies, he's the one you'll have to play as to retrieve and revive whoever has died. How does that make sense since they're all the same person? It doesn't, and it really doesn't have to. This game is bonkers, and I absolutely love it. I am definitely going to come back to Killer7 so I can finish it and do a full video on it, because man, this game is something special. While I did play the old PS2 version, it's on Steam now. If you appreciate strange and kind of off-putting games, I highly, highly recommend it. And to end this video off with, this wonderful exchange of dialogue. You're a good friend, but unfortunately, our interest is not mutual. We both have become burdened with so much, and we don't have time for fun anymore. No, <laughs> there's always time for fun. It's Friday night. Let's dance.